Gun Pop, Big Gun Brian Petrie, giving out the lot. One is mortal, you know it won't miss. Gonna take a shot, dog lot. That's the underdog, yeah, they in the hunt. Send them home, that's KO or submission. Get somebody done. Slime ball, yeah, that's the parlay. We gon' make it known. Pick em pie from MMA tapes, yeah, let's get it going. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. What's up, baby? How come I can't like that? Is a good question. How come you can't like it? I was having uh, trouble with it earlier as well. Did I make this like private or something? I I don't know. I was having trouble with her. I'm having a tech day, boys. So I spent the better part of yesterday looking up OBS features, how to record an OBS, how to not have a file corruption, because you know where your boys had that problem before. Did the podcast, the audio, if you read the bottom ticker, the, the, the different version of this show, a really good version of this show is up on audio. Instead of just doing audio only, since this happens to me all the fucking time, I decided to run it back and do a live. Let's go. Good fight card. I want to talk about it. Um, and uh, But OBS, it didn't file corrupt, but the video was so choppy, I couldn't fix it. I tried everything. I spent the better part of an hour like, remuxing or whatever the fuck obs does all that shit made it an mp4 made it an mov made it an mkv all that shit all that fucking stuff and it just was choppy as shit so i saved the audio luckily i record that separately and now we're live right so for those people who listen to audio don't worry different version on that you can listen to it at work podcast whatever you do humping you guys listen to me when you hump there might be someone out there that does i fucking love it uh, and Paku MMA saying Jacob Malkuna boxes that bum Petrosky. Uh, yeah. So I don't know how I'm going to do this show because I already gave out like full picks. I don't want to like repeat myself. You know, I only have so much brain in there. I kind of wanted the chat to lead the show on this one. I'm obviously going to go through the entire card, give them my picks, give out the slime ball. People who are in the chat may have already listened to the audio. It's only like 40, 45 minutes on the audio version as well. I gave a, my review of row house, the new one. Because Roadhouse, the original, is my favorite movie. So I give a review on that. Um, and I got a new bet. We'll start with the new bet because I don't really know. What is this? What are you saying is I'm going to watch this tomorrow and work. I'm going to listen to the podcast. So, yes, Justin, this is different. The podcast, if, if, if I do say so myself, pretty good. 14 fights, we get right into it. And I'm giving out a new bet. A new bet. I stole this from Barstool. It's a vibes bet. It's for the vibes, baby. I didn't have enough time to make a graphic, but it's for the vibes, right? So what it is, is I'm not going to keep track of these bets like I do the green hammer and the slime ball. It's any prop bet, or really any bet, but most likely it's going to be a prop bet that I want everyone to take for the vibes. You know what I mean? To get the vibes going. And it has to be over plus 500, right? So if you have vibe bets in the chat, shoot me. That could be a vibe bet. But my vibe bet, is I pick Bruno Silva to win. He's my send him home. Send him home early. Send him home early. I think Bruno Silva, unfortunately, is going to clip Chris Weidman round one, round two. I think he's going to win. I think Chris Weidman, he, I don't think he should have came back. However, for the vibes, because I love Chris Weidman, Atlantic City, a little bit of a home game for him. I think most people respect Chris. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Packer doesn't listen out need. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Um, Chris Weidman by submission. Plus 650. That's for the vibes, babe. Hey, that's for the vibes. The official pick is Bruno Silva. But for the vibes, Wyman by submission plus 650. Already placed it. Already placed it. First side chat for this guy. I got my son watching me blow his mind with a shout out. What's up, baby? I don't know your son's name. Declan? Is that your name? Declan ran a video. What's up? Declan's son. You guys are the best. Uh, sad but true. Yeah, I love Wyman. But... Listen, he defended the title three times. He doesn't need to come back, right? But he did. Uh, my vibe is Nate to train. If you don't lose, he'll probably win 100%. Nate to train. We'll get to, again, I'm kind of bouncing around. I want the chat to kind of lead this because I already kind of did this, and I don't want to repeat myself. I'm already a fucking notorious story repeater, so I don't want to repeat myself over and over and over and over and over again because that's fucking annoying. But I did the full pick on the audio. But uh, I'll go through all my picks. So... Did Bruno Silva, he is my send him home. Chris, Chris Wyman for the vibes, plus 650 for submission. 
already bet those slime ball parlay. We will wait till somebody gets in the chat and maybe they'll, they'll wait to the end. I'll get the slime ball multiple times. The slime ball parlay is Nur Sultan Ruzabuyev. If you watched the Anakin Florian, you knew I was high on him. I'm still high on him. Ruzabuyev, Bill Algio, eh, oh, Billy, Billy G, and Julio Arce plus 160. Not, not, not fucking, not fucking juicy, huh? Not fucking juicy, but that's a winner, right? I see some people on, on the Anakin Florian go, you're an idiot for taking Ruza Boy. If he hasn't been out in the first round in forever, and when he does, he loses. I'm aware. But Dumas, Dumas, Cedric Dumas is not good, right? Watch the Cody Brunage fight. He laid in at 17 strikes and just out grappled a gas Cody Brunage. Ruza Boyev is in Philly now. I don't think he's getting tired in the dude six fucking five and throwing hammers. So I like Rosa Boyev right there. If it gets out of the first round, I think he if he gasses, he'll lose the third. He'll still have the first. Dumas isn't feeling this guy. He's not finishing the got a lot of shit outside the cage. You know what I mean? He's got some chick problems, right? You know, he doesn't listen to Jay Jay Z. You know, 99 problems with a bitch ain't one. He got a couple, he got a couple chick problems. You know what I mean? I like Ruza Boyev. He's my mortal lock as well. He's a mortal lock, and I'm going to wheel him. I'm going to wheel him. Uh, the number's gone down. I said this on, on the audio version. People ask me if I think I move lines. No, I don't, because I put a 1,000 fake dollars on the anchor for you, and I did say I was going to do a multi-unit play, and the line went down. People put money into it, so people are actively fading your boy, which is amazing. See a lot of Nate the Train love in here. <clears throat> Forgot this is my son's channel. That's his name. All right, Declan, you're the man, bub. Keep keep up the YouTube stuff. I love it, bub. Nate to train for life. John Jay. Good chalk, though. Heard you drop the whole 10 U's on a big fella. Bold move, but I'm with you, BP. That's right, lazy bet. I did say that again. You're gonna hear me say this a lot. I did say it in the audio. I wanted to, I'm, I'm completely transparent. You can talk shit about my picks. You can talk shit about me, but the one thing I strive strive for is honesty in everything. So on Monday, when we recorded the Anika Florian, I said I'm going to put up the 10 units on, on Rosa Boyev, and I'm still that confident. However, my DraftKings account wasn't as confident as I was. I got a little ahead of myself. I got a little confident. If I did the 10 uni, I would have very little to play with on a 14-fight card that I want to touch a lot of spots. So I'm going to walk that back a little bit. Rosa Boyev, all in, mortal locking them. But as far as 10 unis go, I think I'm going to go about six, maybe seven. We'll see. I haven't placed a bet yet. I did the slime ball. I did the green hammer. I did the vibes bet. But I have not done the, the six or seven unis. That will probably be Friday or Saturday. I could reload up and go just 10 uni hammer dick them. I could do that. But my kind of beats my philosophy that I play with money that I have. And then if I'm fucking... Uh, Oh, whoa, I got Derek Yates coming at me. Why you act like a dumb kid for act like a man? You're not funny. Thank you, Derek. But um, I, I'm, a, I'm a man enough to know that you spelled you're wrong. It's it's you, you, it's you, Y O U apostrophe R E. But thank you, Derek Yates. Anyway. Um, yeah, so not quite 10 unis. We're going six. We're going seven. Um, I'm walking it back. Yeah, right. Don't you have a max bet, brother? Thirty percent of your bankroll, pretty much. Yeah. So I don't. I don't have anything set up a max bet. I keep getting emails from DraftKings going, "Hey, be a VIP member. We'll give you free tickets. You got to put deposit this." I haven't done that yet, but I don't. Uh, I don't do a 30 40 percent bankroll. I have shoved shoved in the middle several times with uh uh with all my chips essentially maybe on tilt maybe i'm not just basically going you know what fuck it i'll reload if i lose but i'm so confident it's my event let's go a thousand right the biggest bet i've ever made was a thousand dollars that was on chris curtis in vegas i won over joaquin buckley the biggest bet i've ever made biggest bet ever lost uh right around the 800 range so i i like i like rosa boya but i can't commit to the 10 years. I thought my bankroll was bigger than it was. I haven't really paid attention much. I usually stick to my one unit, two unit plays. And uh, I, you know, I was hitting last weekend early, but then I start missing. I didn't realize how much I missed. I need to get better at maintaining that, uh, the bankroll thing for, for DraftKings. I only play on one book too. So it should be easy. I only play on DraftKings. Uh, I don't bounce around books. 
Uh, what's up, PP96RS? What's up, bad? Declan thinks you're hilarious so Derek can get bent. Thank you, Declan. Yeah, Derek, get bent, dude. Six units huge. Definitely, definitely big. Hopefully, Buckley can become a top guy. But if he can't, give some trouble with Sal Paul and put some beats on him. I think Lupe is going to mix it well and get the late finish. I've been seeing that take. I'm on Buckley, by the way. So we'll get to that fight. I'm on Joaquin Buckley. I, I wish I got him at plus money. He's even money right now. Hopefully, I see a lot of Sharps, the Dogger Pass boys. A lot of people like Luke. They think he's the better fighter. I think they're right. But I think Luke, a little bit older, wrestled against RDA, took him down eight times, right? And when they were standing up, he didn't look great. Before that, got pieced up by Jeff Neal. Now, I don't think Joaquin Buckley's Jeff Neal. I don't think he... His technique's that good. I don't think his boxing's that good. His chin is a little bit of a problem. He's been put out four times in his career. He's at 70 now. He's looked good so far, but he's explosive, and he's so fucking fast. And um, Vizete Luque is getting a little bit older, and I think a lot of those wars are starting to wear on him. He was not the same in the Jeff Neal fight. Every time Jeff Neal touched him, he got hurt, right? And I think if Buckley lands something hot, like a jumping knee, a fly knee, or one of those fucking kicks, hand something, it's going to hurt Vicente Luque. But if Vicente Luque can get the fight to the ground, Buckley trains with some really good guys, the B squad down in down in Houston. He's been down there with, you know, Nicky Rod and all those and, and, uh, and all those guys down there. So he, he's working on his ground game. He travels across the world and, and gets working, and he's super explosive. But if he can get up, if he gets up and exposes that fucking neck, Vicente Luque has got one of the better chokes, front chokes, darces, you name it, out there. So I'm actually curious. I got DraftKings pulled up. Uh, I pick Buckley. I think Buckley's going to win by KO. That's my that's my official prediction. Buckley by KO is plus 240. Vizete Luque, <clears throat> excuse me, Vizete Luque by submission, plus 500. Now, that's something you can dance with, babe. That is something you can dance with. Plus 500, Vizete Luque by submission. The guy's got a great front stroke, and if Joaquin Buckley, who's explosive, athletic, if he rushes to his feet, get that neck gets taken uh i can see that happening for sure spread the bankroll around next time around some it's like manure you don't start and stick it up but that's a very good point there lazy bed buck's been doing well in the weight class he has been doing good he's i don't like buckley was training with Bilal as well purple yeah so Bilal is a great training partner Bilal puts a pace on guys i've heard i'm a little i'm not super close with Bilal, but i've heard rumors about Bilal. uh, uh Bilal, excuse me and he, he's one of the best training partners out there he puts a pace on you and when you're with him, you're in a camp. Like, he makes you fight. Like, this guy is notoriously really good in the training room, obviously really good in the cage, too. He should be fighting for the title. And I like that Buckley's been with him because he's not going to slow down. And for a guy at 85, he wasn't that big, but he's cut up. Just pop, pop, pop. Cutting to 70. Word me a little bit, but last time he cut to 70, I remember seeing an Instagram video or maybe his own personal video. Um, he was, like, already on weight. You know what I mean? Like, he was already, like, at, like, 174, like, three days before the fight or something like that. Like, that's crazy. Leaned out, which I think is good. B team, there you go. I said B squad. B team, thank you. Um, Craig Jones is there as well. He's he's fucking amazing. Uh, Rube Baker, what's up, Rube Baker? What's up, boys? Rube Baker, loyal guy. Nose, beers, Buckley. That's a scary beast. Very scary beast. Luke has a nasty front headlock series. Sub is definitely live. Very definitely live. Plus 500 is great. Bull all made Buckley skinny all of a sudden. Listen, Buckley is lean. Good cardio, more speed, more. I think that's to be the key here. I think if Vente Luque can't get Buckley down, which isn't going to be the easiest thing in the world, um, speed kills. Speed kills. I like Buckley. Um, Kenny Florian, if you haven't seen that show yet, he picked Z Luque. He is, he is a fan of Luque in that spot. Kenny's hot right now. You got to pick one of us. If you're going to tail somebody, you know, maybe tail Kenny at this point because he's fucking hot right now. But I like uh, I like Buck Buckley in that spot. I wish what I got him on the plus money. Uh, I've waited too long now. It's pretty much even. I'm, I'm hoping... With all these sharps coming out, liking Luke, the chat's kind of mixed a little bit. Um, I, I think we can maybe steal like e near even money, a little baby plus money, but I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, forgot there was a kid watching previous comment. Redacted. <laughs> watch Bilal show with Casa versus Mar. Yeah, I'm gonna watch that right when I get off this. Want to eat? I haven't eaten dinner yet. My wife is uh, currently at Target. Is any anybody out there married when their wife goes to Target? She's at Target. She's getting Chick-fil-A for dinner. I haven't had Chick-fil-A in a long time. Believe it or not. I know I look like the picture of health. Haven't had Chick-fil-A in a while. Going to be amazing. My six-year-old, I meant to tell you that top of the show, we might get an interruption. My six-year-old 
did not go with my wife. She's out in the living room watching A for Adley. No, parent out there, they watch A for Adley. She loves that shit. On her iPad, I told her if anything happens, you know, you can come on in. But uh, she's she's rocking it. She's a brave little girl, man. My six-year-old's also six going on 16. So we don't have a very big house. Like, I literally could hear the TV right now. Uh, let's go Malcoon. A lot of people love Malcoon. Ken is 50% last weekend. The camera picker. Camera big day hurt, uh, Jazz T. And let me tell you something. I don't fucking follow anybody. I don't like to tell people. Um, Cody Safdie, who I think is one of the best in the game, if not the best. I sometimes will lean with some of his picks, but I never tail. Never tail. I picked Tate and, Tate, uh, Peyton Talbot on the show. I didn't get to do much show my last week or last week because my, my daughter was sick. But I released a graphic, and I picked Simon, and I dog-locked him because Kenny put $600 on Simon. He was that confident. And Kenny knows fighting. Kenny's a G, right? So I'm like, I got to switch my fucking pick. I got to switch it. If this guy's hot and Simon got dog walked, he looked like a little boy. He looked like a guy that went to high school freshman year. His brother's a senior. Peyton Talbot's the senior. He went to high school and goes, hey, I'm in high school now, man. You can't push me around. I'm your little brother, but you can't push me around. We're in high school. And he got the fucking dog shit kicked out of him. Uh, wasn't even close. Peyton Talbot outmanned him every which way. So I'm not I'm not following anybody right now, but I'm I'm telling people if they like Luke, a, uh Kenny's on Luke as well. Be, I I've been thinking about some kick some ideas around me, Rue Baker. Um, I wanna I'm off that week, so I took a vacation of my work that week. So every day I was thinking about going live or putting out a video or doing something. Um, we're obviously doing the pick them on the Inic and Florian, and and John might kill me for saying this. Um, but we're going to pick every fight. Every fight on the card, Kenny and I are picking. Every single fight. And obviously, I pick every single fight myself. I will be with Christian and Timbo, hopefully, if they're free. Um, but I do want to do something more. More the more than than um, what I normally do because that that's special. That is real special. I was this close to going to 302. This close. Shout out Evan Lagoria. Um, you know, I, I, I don't like calling in favors or anything like that. Evan Lagoria offered to get me a ticket and everything like that and i just would pay for my flight out there but unfortunately i cannot go but man that would have been dope to be in the building for usc 300 uh looking good bro home cooked food all day yeah listen i love a good home cooked meal my wife went to trader joe's we got some chicken we got some fucking beef we've been cooking it up but she that late night target running right across the street from targets chick-fil-a that's unfortunate but man chick-fil-a is good wife at target i hope you're ready for 100 random candles and throw pillows Hundred percent. She goes. She comes up to me. She goes, "Hey, um, I'm gonna use your card. Like we have, we have different cards, right? Uh, we have a we have a joint bank bank account, but we have different like credit cards and stuff like that." She goes, "Hey, I'm gonna use your card for Chick Fil A. Is that okay?" I was like, "Yeah, why?" She goes, "Well, I don't know when I'm getting that Target, so that hundred dollars is is very low. I think it's gonna be close to two or three. Uh, just pull grilled barbecue chicken up. So eating it now. Your boy can cook. Trend Daddy." multi-talented with cooking up Woo, barbecue chicken i love a good barbecue chicken on the grill i love teriyaki chicken on the grill that shit if you i don't know if you guys have penn stations where you guys are at i know it's east coast subs hopefully they're all over the place but a chicken teriyaki at penn station i used to eat there every fucking saturday when i used to get i used to drive i used to deliver uh when i worked at um when i, I still work at ups but i used to work on saturdays and i would i would deliver like a half day on saturdays when I get off, before I had kids and everything, Chick-fil-A, every day, they knew me as the UPS guy. Chicken teriyaki. Woo! I don't know if they're on the West Coast. Trent is an Arizona guy. He just said he misses those. Not sure if they're on the West, but chicken teriyaki at uh, a lot of people like the Philly cheese as well, but they're they're good. Sam needs to reinvent himself. 100% Nazo G. He's a young kid. I'm not going to get on him too much, but... Defense wasn't there. He didn't look strong enough either. Um, you know, he seems... A little loss, back to back losses, but he got and he got beat up bo in both those fights. So, listen, I think he has a tremendous upside, but very young. But he does need to reinvent himself. I agree with you. Uh, don't forget random flavor Oreos and some new flip flops. He looked like a flyweight. He did look very small flyweight. Everyone's saying the same thing. He looked very is overhyped. Not a future champ, George. S. I don't know if he's a future champ yet. He might be over. He's very interesting, dude. He's a very very interesting cat. Um, uh, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know if he's going to be future champ yet or not. I'm not ready to stamp that on him. Miss Boys, he's, Timbo and CC are the best. Love those guys. Um, Timbo is a father, you know, and, and Christian's just a fucking... He, he he plays softball every day of the week, apparently. 
Um, we're going to get together for 300. We're definitely going to do something for 300, whether we're, we're going to make it work. I don't know what it is. We'll make it work. I don't give a shit. Uh, big up, bros. Uh, for 300, taking a gram of wax and putting a gram of flour in it for the day and then smoking it. <laughs> Woo! Uh, I tell you what, um, I haven't smoked weed since sophomore year of high school. Actually, that's not true. So I smoked weed sophomore year of high school, and it used to put me right to sleep. All my friends growing up, they, they, they loved smoking weed. It would put me to sleep. I want to go out and mix it up with some ladies, right? I want to have some fun. That's what alcohol did for me. You know, I didn't like drinking, but I did it because it loosened me up, right? I was like a fun guy, drunk, whatever. We would just put me right to sleep. And then years later, uh, when I was working at party, or not parties, sorry, I was working at UPS. I was unloading trucks. I met a guy named Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas, not the basketball player, really cool guy. And we used to play Madden all the time. He's a good dude or whatever. And I go over to his house and he, him and his buddies are smoking weed. And I was like, nah, nah, I don't do it. They're like, hey, listen, do I just put this gas mask on for a second? Just put the gas mask on. It was totally chill. It's totally chill. So I put the gas mask on for not even a half second. I thought I was going to die. I got waterboarded with smoke. Um, that was the last time. I don't think it even got high. I, think, I, thought, I thought I was going to die. That was the last time any weed has come near me. My wife actually used to, before we uh, got married, her and her old boss would, they, they liked it. My wife, my wife high though, isn't, isn't fun. My wife drunk's fun, but my wife high is not all that fun. She wants to eat. And then like, you know, if you want to get a little frisky, like, Hey, you want to tumble a little bit? You know, she's like, I'm fat from eating. So it's like, eh, keep the weed at home. Uh, Chick fil A is good. I love Chick fil A. Penn Station rocks. Thank you, Devin Martin. The gas mask. No, yeah. Fucking buried me, bro. I thought I was going to die. And these, I was with some like real weed smokers, and they were bragging about getting their shit from like California, right? They're like, this ain't the shit you had in high school. This is the real. And it was a half second. I ripped that thing off, and I thought I was fucking dead. They're laughing at me. I had water coming out of my parts of my head that I didn't even fucking know existed, right? pores in my head just open up and i'm just it was fucking brutal bro yeah on a non smoke yeah they they put it on me they put it on me probably because i was whipping that ass in madden and i was joking around a lot with them and i'm, I'm busting balls so they're like hey just put this on and you know i'm a type of guy that at least i used to be like if you dared me to do something uh, or you're like hey you won't do this i was the guy that did it i got in a lot of trouble growing up because if you dare me to do something or you said, hey, this is, the, this is what used to get me as a kid. This is how fractured my ego is and how insecure I was. They'd be like, hey, BP, go uh, whatever. And I'm like, nah, I'm not going to do that. And they're like, you ain't got no balls. I'm going to go do it. You know what I mean? So if you egg me on, at least you used to be. Now I think I'm a little more mature. But if you egg me on, I used to pretty much do anything and, and get in a lot of trouble and then have to explain it to my parents like, hey, why, you know, why is this happening? And I said, yeah, I don't know, because someone said I, I didn't have the courage or the balls to do it. And they're like, well, you're a fucking idiot. All right, so let's go to another fight. Nate the Train, baby. Nate the Train! I love Nate Landweir. I love him. Um, I wish he was more active on social media. He needs... Um, <laughs> Paco MMA. That's, that's funny. Before you get Nate the Train, Paco MMA says, you won't smash that bottle over at PP. That's how it started. We were at a pool party. Uh, it, it, was a, it was a girlfriend of mine, or really not a girlfriend of mine, a girl I was seeing. She had an enormous house with a pool, and she passed out, so I threw a party at her house, and it became wild. And I was very intoxicated, and my buddy's sitting there, and he's hitting the bottle on, like, this metal thing, and it's like, ting, ting, ting. And I go, dude, you couldn't just break that over my fucking head. He goes, what? I said, yeah, break it over my head. So we went through three different people to break it over my head. They couldn't do it. They're like, I can't do it. I don't want to hurt you. I can't do it. I was like, fucking do it. So I put a towel on my head. And th there used to be pictures and videos of this on Facebook. I don't have Facebook anymore. And the, finally, my buddy Corey was like, fuck it, I'll do it. And, and it exploded. Easy as shit. I swear, like, my ears rung a little bit. I didn't have a mark the next day. And I said, I think I can do this. And I did it, like, five more times after that. And each time was kind of the same thing. Like, bells were ringing in my ears, but I'm, I'm Gucci. I was good. I was like, holy shit, this is, like, kind of like a party trick I can do. Probably have some uh, brain damage from that, but what are you going to do? All right, so anyway, Nate the Train, baby. I have a Nate the Train sound mic that I found. I used to have Nate the Train, baby. Everyone loved that sound mic. I got a new one. It makes me laugh every time. If you're on the audio side, I have it on there as well. I'm picking Nate the Train. Hello? 
Okay, this is dog. He's my dog lock. Plus 180 for Nate the train. Look at this bicep. Uh, uh, unbelievable. And I'll break down the matchup after I listen to the soundbite. It's incredible. Here's Nate the train in all his fucking glory. San Antonio, check a look at his bicep. Nate the train in the UFC. He's electric, right? And would make no bones about it. This dude threw down in Russia. He beat some of the best Russia has to offer. Some say he might have left his best days over in Russia. Because I can't believe he fucking got knocked out by Herbert Burns. Herbert Burns stinks. Speaking of that, I have Arce winning that fight. I know Arce is a 35er coming up to 45. Uh, give me a live. Hello, this is dog. Hello? Okay, this is dog. Hello, they got a good dog. And he is a dog. Nathan Chang's a dog. He's got a dog all in his chest, baby. He's got like four of them there. But if he survives against Emmers in the first round, Emmers is coming off a 49 second knockout over Dennis Bazook in the first round. Emmers really isn't the one punch kind of knockout guy, but I think he's got some confidence. He's going to come out Nate aggressive. Nate has been knocked out in the first round over uh, Julian Arosa and Herbert Burns. Both by knees, by the way. And then Danny Gay clipped him a few times in their fight, his last fight that he lost. Nate looks to be in phenomenal shape. This is a track and field star, right? This is a dude who is an athlete. Um, he's a little bit older in age, and I think his chin might not be on the back nine. However, if he gets out of that first round, and I kind of hope he does, you bet Nate live, because I think he'll lose the first round. And second or third, we're getting a better plus money. I'm already going to beat be betting on pre-flop. I'm already going to be betting. Trin's got the uh, line right now, plus 154. So he actually came down. So I should have bet him earlier. He was plus 180. Um, I love Nate the Train in this spot, though. Jamal Emmers, I mean, look at his fucking UFC record. I hate to be an asshole. I'm going to be an asshole for a minute on Jamal Emmers, right? He's fought everyone. I think he's a talented guy. There's some times where he could have um, won fights. Like the Giga Chikot fight, Chikot, excuse me, split decision. He could have won that fight, right? Uh, he landed more strikes, landed takedowns, but he just didn't get the knot. His UFC win, though, is Vince Cachera, who didn't finish him. Lost to Pat Sabatini, dropped Pat Sabatini, decided to play footsies with him, got his fucking leg, took him, boom, got lost. Comes back against Kasum Askabob, right, who I think was undefeated at the time. Don't really know who he is. Unanimous decision win, wasn't the most impressive performance. 62 strikes, landed one takedown. Then he loses to Jack Jenkins. Very close fight again. Could have won that fight. Jack Jenkins fights similar to Nate the Train. Maybe better kicks. And then one punches Dennis Bazook, who doesn't have a UFC win. So his wins in the UFC are Dennis Bazook, Kasim, Askabob, and Vince Cachero. That's it. And he's never won back-to-back -back fights. Enter Nate the Train, who's got the biceps. Look at his bicep. Uh, I, I think Nate the Train is only going to win this fight. I think he's going to push it. Maybe a third-round stoppage. Maybe a third-round submission would be fun. Uh, Emmers is tough, though. He has slowed down. He's hard to finish, though. He's durable. Julian Rosa got him out there in the contender series, but that was kind of more of an explosive shot as opposed to getting wore, wore down. Uh, but I like Nate by decision here. I like Nate live as well um, as he moves forward in this fight because I think second and third round are all his. But again, Jamal Emmers by round one KO. I talked about this on the audio side. Uh, Jamal Emmer's round one KO is, is absolutely live. Absolutely live. So, Nate the Train, baby, I'm playing the sound bite one more goddamn time because it's too fucking good. Hey, San Antonio, take a look at his bicep. Woo! Nate the Train in the UFC. <laughs> it's electric. Remember when he had his long hair? His hairline starts here. And he had that long, weird hair. And... <laughs> And now it, it, he, he trimmed it up. He finally looks good. But he had that, like, kind of weird hair in the back, like a Craig T. Nelson. And his hairline started here. I mean, Nate the Train is the fucking best, man. Trent says, Nate Laneway by submission in round three plus 4,000. Four uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I love that. I love that. I've done heaps of tape on this fight. I think Emmer should be an even wider favorite. He's so much better. Paku MMA is a smart sharp. I like that. I believe other people... Other sharps as well are picking Jamal Emmers. I think he's a talented guy. I just think he doesn't put it together, and at least he hasn't put it together yet, right? And um, uh, hold on, let me see. John Dotson, a big uh, BKFC walk, walked down in full ninja costume for the face of wild scenes. John Dotson, man, I tell you what, good fighter, exceeded my expectations, but when he was on the Ultimate Fighter, which I, in my opinion, 
Besides Tufts five, season five with Jens and BJ coach Nate Diaz won the season. Besides Tough Five, that season with Mayhem and uh and, and Bisbing, um, that was to me the best second best season, right? John Dotson won the show, BTJ Dillashaw. But he wore those pajama pants and he had like the <laughs> that little laugh, dude. Drove me fucking nuts. Character for sure. And I uh, think he he, hopefully he's getting paid. We got a Riker Moore, I'm riding with you a thousand on Rosa William. Let's go, Riker. Let's do it, babe. Um, some other spots here. We got Callan Longman, the Irishman, who talked all that shit about French people, all that shit about French MMA, and Taylor Lapop Lapolis is uh shut him out, right? Callan is now rebounding well. He was only 8 0 going in, first loss. I gotta ask the chat questions though. Whenever I cap a fighter, Reese McKee, Conor McGregor, Mason Jones. These are the guys that, few guys, there's several others that have come from Cage Warriors. Is Cage Warriors a bunch of frauds? Because I believe Logman was double champ. Mason Jones was the double champ, didn't do much in the UFC. He's going to make his day one. He's young. He's going to make his way back to UFC, but didn't, didn't make it you know, in the UFC. Then you got Connor. You got Reese McKee, who I believe was a champ over there. He hasn't really done much. He's fighting on this card. It's Cage Warriors fraud, right? Are they really a breeding ground for European MMA? Like we all say, if you're a champion there, you can make in the UFC. They've proven to do that, but they've also, also failed. Logden, 8 no young guy, um, put his skis ahead of his mouth or whatever that fucking expression is, and yeah, got fucking shut the fuck down as, against a guy I thought he could have beat. Now he's a minus 360 favorite over Angel Pacheco, who got dropped several times against Danny Silva coming down in weight small at 45 going to 35 at 32 years old you know doesn't have the best body in the world should be an easy weight cut if he does it right but does he have enough money to do it right this is UFC debut <laughs> I don't know I went Logden minus 360 is crazy I'm not touching slime ball not touching anything we got a lot of Mount Coons in the in the house tonight I'm going Andre Petrosky don't fucking boo me do I have a boo thing on here I don't fucking don't boo me. All right, Paco MMA has a has a take on Cage Wars. Cage Wars is in fraud, but there are a few regional scenes promotion I respect more. Like, yeah, I mean LFA, I I respect LFA a lot. But Paco, I love you, bud. But I'm going Petrosky here. I'm going Petrosky just because of the number. Andre Petrosky by sub is, is a great number. It's like five fifty by knockouts. Interesting. Malcolm is the better wrestler. Petrosky is the better grappler. He did get a little bit. Um, Mm. He did get a little bit exposed against the Jerry Murs card, I would say, Petrovsky did, but he's a big, strong dude. I think if he strikes with Malkoon, he'll be all right. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, so I think uh, I think Petrovsky with this number, man. You can you can prove me wrong, Paku MMA. I love it, bud. I'm not going to put a lot on Petrovsky, but I am going to tip Petrovsky plus 185 currently, Jacob Malkoon minus 225. And what was the props I was looking at earlier? Let me pop those up because... He didn't impress me, and they just came out, too. These were When I recorded earlier, these props were not out for these earlier fights. So, um, Petrosky here. Petrosky by KOs, plus 750. By submission, plus 600. I mean, those are those are great, great numbers. You know, Malkoon is position, position, position. He doesn't finish. And his last time out against Cody Brundage, he looked good. He looked aggressive. That was the fighter that I wanted to see. Knee Cody Brundage, uh, knee Cody Brundage in the face. Cody Brundage couldn't continue. We all know what that means. And got a no. Oh, did he get a win or did he get? What was it? What was the official ruling on that? Was it a no contest or did he get a fucking L for that? Let me let me pop that up here. Lost. Yeah, he got DQ'd. Motherfucker. Um, look, Nick Maximoff is a really good indicator of how this, I think this fight's going to go. Nick Maximoff and Jack, Jacob Malkoon. Malkoon took him down nine times with 83 strikes. Malkoon is a high volume guy, but again, Petrovsky has faded in the past. I think he's cleaned up his cardio. He's also, I believe a Jersey guy. So it's a bit of a hometown for him. I think he's coming in shape. I think if he strikes with Malkoon, he'll do very well. And I think if he goes to the ground, you know, similar to the Brendan Allen who had better jujitsu. Brendan Allen didn't have the better wrestling than Malkoon. He had the better jujitsu and he won that fight. Close fight. You know, Allen landed more strikes. It's going to be greasy. It's going to be fucking close. You know what I mean? It's going to be 
sloppy. And when they when they get slop like that, you're throwing you're throwing decisions. And we're in Atlantic City, which I feel like we haven't been in a while. Um, you know, Jersey. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the, the underdog there. I like Dudakova as well over Gatto. That's a straight number play as well. I think Melissa Gatto has been in there with better fighters. Dudakova though, if the volume's up in the grapplings there, I think she can just stifle Gatto. It, it, you know, in my opinion, uh, I actually like into uh, Anton Tukali, the Pleasure Man. Remember this guy on the Ultimate Fighter? He or excuse me, the Contender Series. He like walked in the cage like this, like was so fucking confident. He's on a three fight skin, you know. Jalton I made up, destroyed him. Um, fucking Vitor Petrino took him to a decision, and then he got knocked out by Taysom Pedro. They, these guys have fought before. Ibo, Ibo, Asan, how do you say his name? Turkish guy, just haymakers inside the clinch. He hit Takali a few times in the first fight, but then he slowed down the clinch, got taken out, got choking out. Turkali was plus one ten. I like Turkali in this spot again. Don't know if it's going to happen by sub, but he's been in the fucking show. Evo has it. You got the contender series call up. Cool. You knock some dude out. Your record's really weak. You know, outside your wins are really weak. You have power. You can clip to Cali, who the pleasure man, he might have confidence might be. And you might catch him. However, eh, I don't think so. I'm going to go pleasure man there. I like Dennis Bazook over Connor Matthews. Dennis Bazook is uh needs a win bad. This isn't a long go pick. I know um I know I I get accused of sucking long goes fighters dicks or whatever. I don't know Dennis Bazook. I've never spoken to him. We don't follow each other. I've never messaged him or whatever. I have no loyalty to him. He's 0-2 in the UFC. The Sean Woodson fight he took in a couple days, missed weight, got bullied around by Sean Woodson. He's like eight feet tall. What are you gonna do? The Emmers fight he got put out on a full camp. Right? He's 26 years old. He's fought his way, contended series twice. Wants to be in the UFC, needs to be in the UFC. Well, he needs to win this fight. Connor Matthews is, is a bit one-dimensional. They're both very similar. Two tries on the Ultimate Fighter, or excuse me, the Contender Series. I think Connor Matthews got a uh, scholarship, got the deal, and Bazook didn't. Um, either way, Matthews is going to want to grapple a little bit. He got absolutely bullied balled by Francis Marshall on the Contender Series. Matthews, though, from the New England Cartel, great camp. Longo Sarah, East Coast boys meeting up. I think Bazook just might have him a little bit here. He's got to have cardio, though. Connor Matthews is, is a military man. He doesn't quit, doesn't slow down. And uh, But I like Bazook just a little bit. He needs it more, in my opinion. He fucking needs it. He loses this. He's cut. There's a reason the UFC didn't sign him two times. The ultimate fighter, he or excuse me, why do I keep saying that? The contender series, he lost to uh, Melsic, Bagdadaria. Good loss, right? Melsic is not a bad fighter. Then you win uh, against Romero in a really boring fight. Romero shot your legs every five seconds. I get it. You didn't finish him. You go outside the UFC. You get some finishes over some guys that you should have got finishes over. Get the call up on the UFC in short notice. You lose to Woodson. You get put out under a minute by a guy who's not putting a lot of people out uh, with one strike like that. Bad look. Your head's on the chopping block. He needs it. He needs the win. The number's low. I'm taking Bazook. Julio Arce is in the slime ball. Um... Excuse me. Slime Slimed up. Huge number on RSA. I know he's coming up from 35. <laughs> and you won't get <laughs> yes. I, I whenever I say contender series, that's a funny comment by Lazy, but you keep stumbling on your words and you won't get your DW you know, scholarship. I won't get it. I won't fucking get the scholarship to keep stumbling on my words. I like RSA. I know he's coming up from 35. He was not the biggest 35er. He's been off for a year. But Herbie Burns, Herbie Burns, he's 11-4, and four, who has a win over the beautiful, the wonderful Nate Landwehr. You know, I said this on the audio. He doesn't have dogs in his chest. He's got a bunch of cats, man. This guy just doesn't have it, right? Cardio, not good. He's got a good first round in him. If you want to take Herbie Burns, first round submission, by all means, take it. I think Arce's price is inflated for sure. But on a 14-fight card, I got to find spots. He's a spot. He's a slime ball. I don't think size matters here, right, ladies? Am I right? Size doesn't matter, right, ladies? Uh, and I think he just he's better everywhere than Herbert Burns. I do. I think Herbert Burns stinks. And uh, I don't think he's going to be in the UFC much longer. I like Holy Arce. Holy Arce, I know he's a little undersized, but I think he needs to finish Herbert Burns here. A finish in, like, late second or third round. Once Herbert completely gasses. Uh, give me Arce. Speed two, speed kills. Arce, 92% takedown defense. I don't think Herbert Burns has great takedowns. He's going to be a little bit bigger, obviously, but I don't think his takedowns are all that great. His jiu is great, but or maybe not even great. It's just pretty good. 
Um, so uh, there we go. Josh T says, all about the motion of the ocean. That's right, baby. Isaac Rivera had some, uh, he did the emoji eyes. Yeah. The size matter, Isaac Rivera? Well, this guy's probably hanging with a 12 incher. Of course, size matters to him. Uh, Vinja Gingeroba versus Loopy. I think I'm all over Loopy here. I think a Gingeroba, just one way to win. That's take her down. And I think Loopy it could get taken out once or twice, but I don't think she's going to get held down. I think she's going to get up. I think she's going to beat her up. Uh, I like Loopy here. Speed kills. Loopy's also. He's she's fighting more, right? She's getting the experience. Yeah, she's got some losses. She looked really bad against Luana Carolina. She wouldn't quit with the single leg and the body lock takedown, but then she involved and she's getting better and she's putting volume on people. Gingeroba's tough. The over in this fight, you hammer it. I like Loopy by decision. I think that's a great play. Uh, we talk about Nate Lee and Weird. Chidi Bang Bang. Chidi Njaquani versus Reese McKee. Reese McKee is a popular pick. Chidi has not made 170 since 2016. And I think the last time he was there, he fucking uh, missed weight or something like that. And there's video out there of him saying he'll never go to 70 again. He is 6'3", 35 years old, going to 70 against Reese McKee. Watch the scales on this fight. This guy misses weight by 6, 7 pounds. Reese McKee's a dog. He'll probably still take the fucking fight, right? Um, but Kenny's all over Cheaty. Kenny is heavy on Cheaty. I don't see it that way. I pick Cheaty. I'm going to stick with Cheaty because I think his power is is really good in that first round but if he gets out of that first round i'm live betting reese mckee like my life depends on i think reese mckee is a live dog here um and you know he excels when when you're banging it out right when you're when you're scrapping it up cheaty though has big big power he doesn't have big big cardio i'm hoping he went to 70 the right way with the help from the ufc pi and all that stuff and he's in phenomenal shape because then we're not to worry about it. i think i think cheaty the better striker um, he's a black butt on the ground, even though you can't really tell. Both wrestling games are a little weak, and they're both very similar. I mean, Cheaty's 6'3. Reese McKee's not a small 7 either. He's one, you know, six two and a half or whatever the fuck he's listed at. I like Cheaty, but I'm keeping an eye on Reese McKee. That's a really good live bet spot. I like Bill Algio as well. This is the Green Hammer boys. It is the weakest Green Hammer I have I have ever given out. I need a win. I need a win. There's a lot of overs I like in this spot. I think Kyle Nelson has fixed his cardio issues that plagued him in the past. It's the reason he got finished. I think Bill Algio isn't the biggest knockout puncher. I don't know if he's going to submit Kyle Nelson or not, but I like Bill Algio in this spot. He's a slime ball candidate. I also like the over. That's the green hammer. Over two and a half. It's chalk as fuck. Don't laugh at me. Don't laugh me out of the building, but it's uh, minus 230. Right, that's a multi. I, I put 1.2 units on that already. One unit on the slime ball parlay, which I'll re, which I'll talk about later. I gave it out earlier, but for the people that joined, I'll give it out again. And 1.2 on the green hammer, minus 230. I think this goes to the decision. I think Bill, Bill Algio wins. I might hedge with Bill Algio by submission. I don't think he's going to knock out Kyle Nelson, but that's the green hammer right there, baby. This big old fucking thing. Look at this. I can't wait to smash more stuff with this. When I smash that jar full of change... Glass is so hard to clean. I'm still finding glass. I sweat for like an hour and picked up glass everywhere. I'm still finding fucking glass in there. So I don't want to smash glass, but I fucking will. I'll smash some of his ass as well, do. Um, oh, pull that out. There we go. We're back. Uh, so I like uh, I like Bill Algeo. I already talked about Rosa Boyev. Chris Wyman, we touched on. Uh, we haven't touched the main event. Main event, Aaron Blanchfield. I love Aaron Blanchfield. Got a little crush on Aaron Blanchfield. Someone I, I insinuated, or maybe I flat out said that she was a lesbian on uh, Anna Conforian. I have an good authority that she does have a girlfriend who's also a female fighter who corners her, and Aaron corners her. They're, they're partners. They're a beautiful couple. No problem with it. But I think Aaron Blanchfield, there's just, you know what it is? You know what it is? I mean, obviously, she's pretty. She's a fantastic fighter. But she kind of looks like a girl I dated, right? Like years ago, obviously, before my wife. In my in my late twenties, so excuse me, my late teens, early twenties, and yeah, Fatima Fatima Klein is the fighter's name, who I believe is her partner. Is what I've been told, right? Uh, someone two comments on the internet before said she is not a lesbian. I don't know her sexual preference, but I have been told that that is her partner. So I am not her type. Also, I'm married and fifteen years older than her, or something like that. So it doesn't matter. But she reminds me of a girl I dated in my early twenties, where you, know, you start to really find yourself, and you, it just it just got a crush on her, and she's a fantastic fighter. I completely 
contradicted myself on the audio side. I think Fiore is an amazing pick as an underdog here. I think this is going to be really testing for Blanchfield. Fiore has good takedown defense, and Blanchfield cannot take down Tala Santos. She had a strike with her, would look good, but Fiore's a different beast, better footwork, better kicking, not as much power as Santos, but has better striking, better volume. I'm interested to see how she goes five rounds. I know Blanchfield can go five rounds. But I'm worried Aaron's going to rush takedowns, can't get takedowns, fall behind the striking, lose a five-round decision. That's what I'm worried about. Throw at that number is a great number. However, I'm taking Blanchfield. I think Blanchfield is the better fighter. Someone pointed out, forget what podcast, they basically said, this could be a great learning. I mean, Blanchfield's very young, right? In like two or three years, they rematch. Blanchfield could dominate the fight. But right now, it could be Furot's spot. He picks Furot. Um, I understand that. Kenny picked Blanchfield as well. Which I was surprised. He, he said a lot of good things about Man Allen, um, but I like Blanchfield. If she gets a takedown, it's over. If she gets multiple takedowns, obviously it's over. But I think she can hang tough enough in the striking, and Farouk doesn't have this crazy power to really scale, scare Blanchfield, who is a dog fighting in Jersey where she's from. She reminds me a little bit, not her style or anything, but her eagerness and willingness to get in there and scrap a little bit of uh, uh, Frank Yeager, female Jersey Frank Yeager a little bit. Um, and, I, and I like her in the spot. I think she's going to make it ugly. I think she's going to win this fight. I don't love the number. I love the number on throat. I'm a gambler, right? I'm putting my crush. I'm putting all that aside. I think, I think uh, was for the print. She was not the pronunciation of the week. The pronunciation of the week was Nur Sultan Ruzabuyev and Werner Janjaroba. Uh, and I'm, I probably butchered both those names. I can't speak properly, guys. Okay. It's a problem. However, give me Blanchfield. All right. Mortal locks and all that. Real cap. Before we, what are we about? 45 minutes on? What are we? Yeah, 46. That's good. Chat, you guys have been a fucking amazing. Uh, slime ball parlay. We'll give that. Everyone loves the slime ball parlay. Slime ball parlay, again, is Nusultan Rizabiliev. I'm getting pretty good at actually saying that. Bill Algio and uh, Holy Arce plus 160 already placed. Got it at plus 160. Might go up, might go down. Hopefully it'll go up for you guys. You guys get better numbers if you place late. Green Hammer over two and a half. Bill Algio, Kyle Nelson. And Mortal Lock, all my locks. Send them home. Bruno Silva. We don't talk about Bruno. Knockouts minus 120. That's not great, but send them home. Mortal Lock, Rosa Boyev, Dog Lock, Nate to Train. Just, just the fucking greatest. I love that you guys like the pronunciation of the week. Pronunciation of the week is my favorite. People think it's a bit. They do. Cody used to do it. And then when I would break down fights, I would kind of really talk really quick over a name I couldn't do. And John would be like, what's that? And he started laughing at me. So then he's like, he emailed me or texted me or something. He goes, uh, do you think you would be able to do the pronunciation a week. We think it'd be really funny if you did it. And I said, yeah, of course. I don't care. I know I can't pronounce names. I'm terrible. My best friend in the entire world is Steve Smith, right? I don't pronounce names great. My other best friend's Austin Campbell, right? Oh, you can't butcher those fucking names. So, <clears throat> um, so he asked me to do it. And I love it. I'm glad you guys do it. People think that it's a bit, and there are times like the half field of Thanos, I do throw a little fat tongue on it or whatever to be funny. But most of the time with a Portuguese name, I kind of have to do it melodically to sound it out. I can't just read it like phonetically. I kind of have to, you know, because capoeira, everything to me has like motion on it. Uh, yeah, Mejina, Mejina Rodriguez was last week. Mejina Rodriguez. Yeah, because the, the Brazilian, the, the, the R's or H's like Jose Aldo. You know, it's not Jose, it's Jose, and, and it, you know, they, they got all these fucking rules. I don't know them. So John loves it because John goes to a fucking library in, in, in his hometown in, like, a private booth, puts on the audio file. Heidi Dean sends him all the audio. She records all the names and everything. She sends them to me, too. She's like, hey, you struggled with this guy. Maybe next time you'll get him. Uh, and he just constantly does it, and he's such a professional about it, and he's so fucking good about it. I don't do that. I don't ever... Look, um, I don't ever look up names or anything like that. I do research and I'll hear an announcer say it, but Bruce Buffer doesn't help. Bruce Buster Buffer butchers names more than I do. That fucking guy's clueless with it. 
But um, yeah, so it's not a bit. I promise you it's not. I have t- hard time mispronouncing words, names, everything. So uh, I have a fat tongue, right? Fat tongue. That's what it is. Fat tongue disease. All right, boys. Sorry about not having like a real video here. I know this was kind of a loose structure, but I promise you if you listen to the audio, it's a, it's a fun show, right? And we're going to be back next week. My boy Chris Curtis fights next week. I know next week's card's not that great on paper, but I'm excited because Chris is fighting. And then obviously the big one, 300. I'm still cooking up ideas. If you have ideas, shoot me a DM of what I should do for 300, like a good idea or whatever you guys want to see. I mean, I'm doing this for you guys. You guys are fucking incredible. Uh, also on the audio side, right in the right in the beginning, I asked if there's anybody that can do an outro song for me, right? There was a, a, a podcast that did my old one, and they no longer exist. I went through my DMs on my Twitter, and they don't have an account anymore, and I don't have that file. He put together clips of John saying my name and kind of clips from the show or whatever. So if you're willing to do that, I will send you anything you want from johnannick.com or my website, mmatakespodcast.com, which I, I don't think you want, but whatever. Or if you just want cold, hard cash, I'll send it to you. Um, shoot me the, the finished product in any DMs. I'll appreciate it. For the end of days, you guys are the fucking best. I love you. I love you. And uh, again, audio available everywhere. I promise you it, it's, a, it's a good go. And I'll be back next week, boys. God, I'm sweating, huh? I'm sweating here, huh? All right, Chick-fil-A time, babe. Chick-fil-A time. You guys are the best.